It's time for another viewer question and there's another comment that I like so much that I gave a long answer and it's not really a question it's more of a comment but there was a question in there somewhere so I had to answer it so the question was from Iria or Iria the question was from Iria Negron and she writes hi I'm so in love with your garden congratulations Es un sueño. I am hoping to have something similar to that here in Puerto Rico someday, but I am just starting out with collecting my succulent and experimenting with them to see what survives and what doesn't. It rains a lot here. Sad face. You are my teacher and my inspiration. Keep rolling out those videos. I'm pretty sure you can do it. You'll have to do it a bit differently for me though. So here's a few tips. So the first tip is to create some elevation. Could create a raised planter or a garden bed like this. That way, excess water will drain away from the top layer. So gravity will be doing some help here. As for edging, you can use any rigid material, but I prefer using rocks because I like the look of a rock garden. This is my theme. You could also go a bit more formal and use materials such as pavers or bricks or whatever edging you decide to use. If humidity is a problem, you can use a more gritty medium. So have your soil mix be more of scoria or pumice or lava rock or volcanic rock or whatever it is called in your area. So what you want is to use more of them and a bit lower and a bit less on the soil in terms of composition. As for ratios, it depends on the amount of rainfall that you get and the plants that you intend to use. Hi. <laughs> You will want at least 6 inches of this mix. I mentioned 6 inches but of course deeper is better. Use your best judgment here because it can be quite expensive. What you can do is to have the grittiest part as a top layer then progressively go less gritty as you go deeper. That way you will end up using a less amount of rocks. You know, you're going to get more mileage from the rocks that you get. Airflow is very important to Echeveria because they are very susceptible to fungal rot when it is always humid. A bit of mounding helps as well as removing dead leaves periodically. When they start popping, you'll want to do a bit of preventive measure and apply some antifungals. A systemic fungicide would be the best but use whatever is your antifungal of choice. Also, you, may, you must have to make sure that there's enough space underneath the rosette so the pups are exposed to a bit of airflow. This helps significantly against fungi. Maybe some of you would think that maybe it's easy for me to say because I live in a temperate climate, but I have a couple of friends in the Philippines where, it is a, where they have a tropical climate. It's either just wet or dry and it's pretty much warm the whole year. They were inspired to plant in the ground and using some of the techniques I mentioned, there's an emphasis on a very fast draining mix, a bit of mounding, some digging and elevation, basically a huge focus on the draining aspect of things. And their garden is doing well. I think you'll have to see it for yourself. I'm going to share some links. But here are some of the photos that they've shared in the various groups here on Facebook.
so again, thank you, Iria, for your. I still don't know how to say your name. Iria, Iria. Either way, thank you for your question. I. It's one of the questions that I want to answer because it's definitely my thing, you know, the build and the preparation aspect of landscaping. It's something that you have to plan in advance or think about in advance. It's not something that you can just skip, really. Unless, of course, you, you live in a dry climate and you'll have to worry less about drainage and stuff like that. You might not even have to worry about fungus. I don't know. I'm not sure. In any case, keep those questions coming and I'll see if I can answer them. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.